think that Tehran or Islamabad will be doing the things that they're doing without permission from Beijing, since both of them are default colonies now in a financial sense of Beijing. Unlikely. The reason why silver is at 34 an ounce, as some would say, and gold is at 27, like 60 an ounce. A decoupling of the silver from inflation was demonstrated when the interest, when the interest rates got lowered and the silver price, quote unquote, did not drop. Alarm bells went off in my head when I saw this and it delayed me completing the fiscal budget proposal. I've never seen that before. And I remember when silver was seven an ounce. I remember when gold was like 280 an ounce. And I've never seen gold at 2700 and change before. It's not hard to tell what's going on here. When you're Beijing and you've got multiple of your 30 plus provinces teetering and you had to reissue a new set of bonds, you had a little bit of a pop in your stock market, but it's only a temporary thing. It's already starting to fade because you've got tons of liquidity already in your system. So attempting to lower interest rates further still to to drive internal consumption, which is not there because of population issues and other factors on how their profits will run. Folks uh, watch the real estate bubble over there explode. Now the youth and everyone else is rising up against the CCP, as they call it. You're seeing the evidence everywhere. Having typhoons come in, four of them in a tornado did not help their cause. You wiped out over 13 million chickens from one of those typhoons. All of their agriculture, central and southern, quote unquote, China, wiped out to distract the population. An invasion of Formosa, Taiwan. Is not out of the question. Partially to take the attention of those that's suffering under the financial collapse on the mainland. An additional distraction could happen in Northeast Al Kibalan, in Middle East, so called. Tehran and Riyadh. One is close to having nuclear weapons, and the other one doesn't want one. However, if Tehran gets one, Riyadh is going to insist that they get one. Tehran only push, well, they push out um, a million, maybe two million barrels of oil per day. Not that high. Mamlaka al Saud, on the other hand, pushes out a fair amount of oil on a daily basis. Any conflict between Riyadh and um, Tehran means the oil coming out from other points in the Gulf, Sumer, uh, Bahrain, doesn't have much oil, but their commerce and trade will suffer. It's not just the oil ships, the tankers, it's other ships that bring in commerce that would be impacted in the shooting war between Tehran and Riyadh. You could see several million barrels of oil come off the market. If you're in the Far East or in so-called Europe, you're terrified at the very thought The Russia invasion of Ukraine started all this mess. And because the bulk of the natural gas in Europe was coming from the Russians, and now it's heavily sanctioned, the alternate source 
for the Russian natural gas has been North Mexican, some from Alkibalan, mostly from the Gulf, the Qataris. Legit questions not coming to mind. If you got things heavily destabilizing in the area because of uh, Tehran and Tel Aviv lobbying multiple volleys of missiles and other strikes on each other, and the Houthis jumped in and are firing on every ship going in and out of the Kush Sea, so called Red Sea. You had the makings for a third uh, Persian Gulf conflict. Only thing is, it's doubtful that those in quote unquote DC would be involved. There'll be a quote unquote European theater zone involvement, potentially a Far East involvement. Just the same. The very threat of this becoming a possible reality is being looked at by those who do insurance, by those who are in other industries that ramp up for warfare, munitions and ammunition plants, their forecasts. Wow. It is possible. But the bulk of the players that's involved in any potential um, action, they're all tied back or beholden to Beijing. The question is, would, would Beijing allow it? The smart money says yes. Because, and that will give them cover if there's conflict in um, the Gulf, if there's conflict in Al Kanan. Canaan and the Mr. McConkle Israel thing, uh, whatever. That's two fronts of conflict. And Beijing may take the position hey, if we're going to go to Formosa, sir, now's the time. They may take that particular approach. So that's why I say it's not out of the question, which is why the gold price is where it's at. Because a lot of folks take the same position. Remember, the gold price is tied back to uh, confidence or the lack thereof. In um, a quote unquote economy or quote unquote economies, there's a lack of confidence out there that is boiling over. And the evidence shows up in the markets. So, not a surprise. It couldn't be any other way.